Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My presentation today addresses the use of satellite information implemented in the GIS as an aid for improved delivery of health services. The satellite information is used in a decision support system, which is implemented in the risk and response cycle. Furthermore, the presentation gives an idea how logistic optimization of resources, supported by the idea of integrated logistic support, mathematic modeling, and the use of GIS can improve public health services. My name is Matthias Grösler. I'm working in the research group on learning and neurosciences, regular health and logistics. This group is established at the University of Koblenz-Landau, Campus Landau in Germany. I'm a PhD student and research assistant at the Institute of Mathematics at the University of Koblenz-Landau. In my research, I work on mathematic modeling and the use of GIS for logistic optimization of medical resources in public health services. First of all, the presentation gives an overview on the aims and objectives of the Raglan Health and Logistic Project and the implementation of the here presented topics in the risk and response cycle. The first main topic of this presentation is the ILS-based decision support model for public health services, which is illustrated at an example out of the disaster management. The second issue of this presentation is the logistic optimization of medical devices in public health services. This topic will first be illustrated by means of water management and afterwards by the logistic optimization of medical resources on a small granular level. The presentation is completed by a conclusion and outlook to further work. First, I will start with an overview on the project aims and the risk and response cycle. Our research project is aimed at improving the delivery of health services in general, but especially in rural areas. We are working to assist decision makers in the rapid identification of suitable solutions for a diverse set of circumstances and requirements. To this end, we are developing a comprehensive spatial decision support system. This spatial decision support system uses open source software and will therefore be freely available to anyone who wishes to use it. This includes any decision-making level from health administration to doctors and nurses and also to public. The spatial decision support system aimed to be achieved by our project can be visualized in a risk and response cycle. The yellow flags show where the two topics addressed in this presentation, decision support model and the logistic resource optimization, interfere with the cycle. The cycle starts where temporal and spatial risk data is generated via remote sensing, crowdsourcing and ground data collection. For further work, the risk data is structured and visualized in risk maps in the so-called diagnosis support. The response support compares and analyzes the risk data versus the resource supply data. A result of that is a support for logistic optimization of resources via GIS analysis and mathematical modeling. In a next step, ILS-based decision support is performed. That means that medical services are performed and medical resources are moved in the analyzed area. The performed action now influence and hopefully improve the temporal and spatial risk situation. The risk and response cycle is closed. The position of the yellow flags show that both topics of this presentation have their interference areas on the response side of the cycle and need risk maps as input from the risk side. The result of decision support and logistic optimization, which are created on the response side, have to be communicated back to the risk side again, to the different levels of decision makers. The idea of sharing ideas and knowledge is a central aspect in our project. Therefore, I would like to explain the aim and functionality of Creative Commons at this stage of the presentation. Creative Commons helps to share knowledge and creativity with the world and develop different licenses for different ways of sharing. Attribution license means that you must attribute the work in the manner specified by the author. 
Non-commercial license implies that you may not use this work for commercial purposes. Content which is classified as no derivative works may not be altered, transformed or built upon the original work. Finally, altered, transformed or built work license with the share alike license has to be distributed under the same or similar license as the original work. It is also possible to combine the single Creative common licenses. In the next sequence, the ILS-based decision support model for public health services is presented. The following slides are taken over with the Creative common license from a presentation of Gerhard Ackermann to a similar topic. We started our project by compiling an integrated concept for a complete health system in a developing country. Using the principles of integrated logistic support, we identified three levels, namely rural, urban and national stroke international levels. To demonstrate the support concept, let us start with the rural area. In our concept, the rural health services consist of mobile clinics, staffed by trained nurses, typically from the areas that they serve. The nurses are supported by a flying doctor for more serious cases. At the urban level, we have the hospitals, and we establish a medical help desk. The nurses in the mobile clinics can handle a large number of the complaints, injuries and diseases. They are, however, in contact via satellite with the medical help desk, which is staffed by a medical doctor for consultation on a 24-7 basis. If the doctor at the help desk have any questions, they would use the available telemedicine facilities to obtain more information from the nurse and patient. This information can be sent to national and international specialists for further consultation if necessary. Doing all of this in an integrated manner means that the duplication of effort is reduced and resources can be assigned where they will be best served to keep the community healthy. Unfortunately, real life is not so simple. Things change. The composition of the community changes. Global warming means different diseases at different times, flooding, earthquakes, Everything can change from one day to the next. The problem is that it will probably take years to develop a cost-effective system for one community and then the next day it is no longer optimal. This means that we have to adapt the health services almost continuously if we wish to accomplish a sustained improvement. We need to be able to select the best solution for a given set of circumstances very quickly. So we came up with a model for our decision support system. First we identify the functions that have to be performed. In this sense functions are verb noun combinations such as diagnose problem, select treatment, treat patient, etc. These functions always remain the same. The differences come in when the functions are qualified through requirements such as how quickly how accurately, at what cost. They are further qualified through constraints such as it must be done in low light, in tropical heat, without electricity and so on. And then they are prioritized as well. It is more important to diagnose a problem quickly than it is to inform the patients about health risk when drinking unboiled water. The requirements, constraints and priorities are the things that are different between normal health services on one day and health services in a disaster area the next. In order to perform the functions, we need resources. There are a wide variety of resources and each has its own characteristics, capabilities and again further requirements and constraints. Some work with 230 volts altering current, some require 150 volts, some require super plus petrol, some require diesel. These resources can be combined in different sets of solutions 
that can all, to a greater or lesser degree, satisfy the requirements. These combinations obviously consolidate the characteristics of the resources of the, which they are made up. This is also a finite set. It may be a very large set, but in the end it is finite. To demonstrate, here we have 12 different resources. These could be doctors, nurses, their equipment, an ambulance, whatever. These resources can be combined as solutions. In some cases we need an L when we use a D, in other we can use an A instead of these two, etc. These solutions are then evaluated against the value system consisting of the set of requirements, constraints and priorities and the most suitable one is selected. In the example it is the one at the top right. It should be clear that changes in the requirements, constraints and priorities will require us only to update the value system and reassesses the already defined solution. This will save a lot of time and effort. The next example shows how the United Nations program on space applications is linked to the UN Spider Disaster Management program. The program of space applications focuses on the public health services. A risk in this context can be the infection with malaria via mosquitoes in the surrounding of water bodies if the mosquitoes carry the malaria virus. On the response side, the health situation is improved amongst others by decision support and logistic optimization. The UN SPIDER program focuses on disaster cases. A risk in this context can be the health support infrastructure after a landslide. On the response side again, the health situation is improved amongst others by decision support and logistic optimization. Let us now consider how one can use satellite information in the decision support system. An image of the landscape is taken when the satellite moves over the area. Height is determined and stored. A second image is taken with the second crossing and again the heights are determined. These are now compared with the previous image and information. The differences indicate that the topography has changed and a landslide has probably occurred. When this information is superimposed on a map, one can see where the landslide has occurred and what the effects of the landslide are. In the example used here, the major supply route to a disaster area has been blocked by a landslide. Without the use of satellite information, one would probably only have found this out when the convoy with supplies reaches the landslide. This would of course cause major delays and major problems. In this case, the early warning provided by the satellite information can save valuable time. The question is whether we can use the satellite information so that it not only saves us time, but perhaps helps us to make a better decision in the supply of medical services in the disaster area. Usually we would use the images to determine an alternative supply route, by sea for example, or going inland and then via one of the other roads. We would therefore still focus on the transport problem. If we go back to the model of the decision support system, we can look at the impact that the satellite information can have on the model. Firstly, the set of requirements have not changed due to the landslide. We still have to perform the same functions within the same set of requirements and constraints. What has changed are the characteristics of some of the resources that are available. In this example, these two resources F and N both are located so that they would have to be transported to the disaster area along the road. The waiting time applicable to these two has now increased. The effect of these changes reflects in the characteristics of the solutions, which, as stated previously, is a combination of the characteristics 
of the various resources. When the potential solutions are now evaluated, it can be seen that the previous best solution is no longer optimal. An alternative solution previously defined but not selected now proves to be the most suitable. As an example, let the two resources F and N be two doctors from a town located to the west of Port Elizabeth, so that they will have to travel along the primary supply route to get to the disaster area. Obviously, having them available at the disaster area would be the preferred solution. Using the decision support system now allows us to consider solutions that are not restricted to the transport problem only. Instead of transporting the doctors along the detour, we can now provide treatment assistance by the medical doctors via application of telemedicine. Because the decision support system makes it possible to quickly revise the previous selection without a major effort, it is possible and feasible to refocus efforts on what under circumstances is a better solution. We can ensure that the resources required for supply of the selected solution are provided quickly and will not waste any immediate effort on resources that do not contribute directly to the selected solution. As a result, we have selected a better solution and can implement this without a delay that would have been necessary otherwise. Of course, this is a very simple example of a very complex problem, but should serve to demonstrate the principle. In conclusion, it can be stated that real-time satellite information can be used effectively in the decision support system. When using the satellite information in the decision support system, we can derive a greater benefit from the information than when considering only the satellite information. And the decision support system can be an aid to improve delivery of health services to a disaster area. In the next sequence of the presentation, the logistic optimization of medical resources in public health services will be presented. Logistic optimization is always a process of different optimization steps. In most cases, the process is iterative as the optimum situation can often not be found in the first optimization loop. Logistic optimization of resources in public health is performed by an algorithm that compares a spatial resource supply situation with a spatial resource demand situation under particular conditions. The algorithm results are suggestions for logistic optimization that should improve the actual supply situation. The first step of the logistic optimization process is the identification of risk areas in the analyzed supported region. Those areas show a spatial demand of medical resources. In the next step, the spatial risk or demand data has to be matched with the spatial supply data via mathematical modeling and GIS analysis implemented in the optimization algorithm. As a result of this process step, the algorithm identifies high-risk areas with low health supply. Now the algorithm determines possibilities to supply those identified areas with medical resources and thereby improve the actual supply situation here. Additionally, the algorithm also delivers data of the risk areas with low supply and communicates them to endangered persons. This step represents the interface to the work of another project team member, Melanie Platz, who is working on the adaptive GUI design tailored to user needs. The identification of high-risk areas in risk maps often is a combination of different single maps with environmental or socio-economical information. 
In the example presented here, the environmental information is an exposure map which contains information about rainfall and humidity in South Africa, which can be an indicator for mosquito survivability. The socio-economical information considered here is the population density of South Africa. Combining both maps show the risk for the inhabitants of South Africa to get a mosquito sting. If there was additional special information about the malaria virus distribution in South Africa, a malaria risk map could be created. Medical health supply data can be generated in several ways. Three of the most common ways to collect this data are presented in the following list. Remote sensing via satellites can generate data for example for clean water bodies, groundwater or supply chain infrastructure problems. For crowdsourcing there are mainly three ways to collect data. Commercial with services like Jana sitting in Kenya where mobile owners can contribute worldwide for survey services or the like. The participants are paid by mobile incentives via SMS. In projects like MECO, crowdsourcing is performed within research projects. Additionally, it is also possible to get health supply data via open source crowdsourcing. A third common way to collect health supply data is to ask for spatial ground data from health ministries about medical resources like vaccines, medical devices or medical personnel. The problem of access to clean groundwater in Africa via wells shows the matching of demand and supply data on a practical example. In this case, clean groundwater is a health resource that prevents people from getting ill. A map of groundwater storage in Africa represents a supply dataset. This map, created by remote sensing, shows areas where and in which depth groundwater can be found on the continent of Africa. Another map shows the annual groundwater use on the continent, which represents the demand dataset. In the matching process step, firstly the supply map and the demand map are imported into a GIS. There the different areas of supply and demand get different altitudes according to the resource quality. Areas with big groundwater potential are for example higher than areas with less groundwater potential. In the next step the maps are mathematically matched by creating the difference between supply and demand data for each point of the map. The result is a supply situation map where areas with high risk, that means high annual water use and high water potential are illustrated. In a final step the locations for building wells in areas with high annual water use and high groundwater potential are determined. Those locations show possible spots to build a well. This example shows logistic resource optimization on a very high granular level. In contrast, the following example shall show logistic resource optimization on a very low granular level. The objective is to optimize a bronchoscopy device on an intensive care unit according to process requirements and treatment data. The starting position was an intensive care unit with two bronchoscopy devices which are stocked in three stockment rooms, cleaned in two cleaning rooms and used in treatments in 16 treatment rooms. Medical treatments with bronchoscopy devices are very time critical as they are used for tracheotomy or other treatments where the patient cannot breathe normally anymore. Therefore, the access time to the devices has to be very short. The intensive care unit had problems to fulfill the required performance. As there were only two devices on the intensive care unit, the management thought about buying an additional device or to do a logistic optimization to fulfill the required performance. In the graph on the right, the low spatial availability 
the bronchoscopy device at the starting position of the optimization is visualized. The support algorithm developed to improve the supply situation of the intensive care unit regarding the availability of the bronchoscopy device is presented by the following process chain. First of all, the geodata and the medical and organizational requirements are implemented via database tables into the support algorithm. Afterwards, the medical situation is detected for each treatment room with the example data. This is done by comparing the access time of the room to the next bronchoscopy device with the probability of performing a medical treatment in the particular room. Now, the algorithm has to find the shortest path from the storage room of the device to the treatment room. Now the device with the shortest access time is determined. After the treatment is performed, the device has to be reallocated at the storage room. Therefore, the medical supply situation has to be detected again. To complete the support algorithm loop, the optimized storage room has to be determined by the algorithm. The shortest way to this room has to be found. The optimization structure shows how the algorithm works in detail. The main optimization criteria of the algorithm is the reduction of access time of medical devices. Access time is the sum of transport time to the treatment location and the balance time that can be caused by cleaning processes or when the device is still in use. Transport time is short when devices are already in the area where following treatments are most likely. Therefore. The algorithm records treatment data and generates probabilities. As a result, the algorithm detects most likely treatment areas there, where the medical supply situation is poor. Supply situation is defined as the difference of the vector of the demand coefficient of medical devices and the vector of the supply coefficient of medical devices. In the end, the algorithm tries to allocate the medical devices there, where the supply situation is negative. After the support algorithm was implemented and the optimization was performed, following goals were achieved. No additional device had to be purchased. Only a new stockroom has been created and the washing machine of the devices was moved to another room. Those two measures resulted in an increase of the availability of the device from 76 to 79 percent, which is also visualized in the graph on the left side. In the last sequence of the presentation, the conclusion and further outlook are presented. Derivated from the risk and response cycle, a spatial decision support cycle can be drawn. Remote sensing data, crowdsourcing data, and ground data regarding temporal and spatial risks and health resources are fed into the GIS database. The database then contains health resource supply and health resource demand data in a map format. With this data decision support models and support algorithms are supported to perform spatial decision support with the help of GIS analysis. The resources of spatial decision support are visualized via adaptive GUI for all levels of decision making from control panels of health ministries down to the mobile device of Joe Public. The decision makers then create and collect risks and supply data again via crowdsourcing. The spatial decision support cycle is closed. The two main aims of the further work is to expand the algorithm to higher structural levels and to continue with the implementation of the algorithm into GIS as main tool of the spatial decision support. For the expansion of the support algorithm, the mathematical methods like numeric optimization and fuzzy logic have to be improved.
Furthermore, the algorithm has to be expanded to the appropriate decision-making levels mentioned earlier in this presentation. Finally, the algorithm has to be adapted to several health services beyond groundwater supply and the logistic optimization of medical devices. For further implementation into GIS, a common database system for relevant decision-making data has to be created. This database can contain various data sets of environmental and health-related and socio-economical data. Finally, the user-friendliness of the GIS-based Spatial Decision Support application, developed together with the other project members of the research group, has to be improved in comparison to the actual GUI of the system. Thank you very much for your attendance. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask them.